Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Cancer Support Community Central's Ohio, Central Ohio's uh, Lunch and Learn. Today, we are very excited to have Dr. Stephen List uh, presenting on the five pillars of health. So Dr. List, welcome and take it away. As you said, I am Dr. Stephen List. I am with Revive Chiropractic right here in Central Ohio. Uh, we're actually located right off of Flair's Parkway um, next to Kenneth's Hair Salon. And I feel very honored to be able to present to you guys today because my personal life has been touched by cancer um, with someone in my family. And so I take this opportunity very seriously as I get this chance to just unpack these five different pillars and how you can achieve the healthiest version of yourself, as the tagline of the talk there says. Uh, and so um, I, before I jump into the meat of that, I just want to tell you a little bit about my own personal story. Like I said, it was uh, touched by cancer, and it has to do with uh, this lady right here, right? Uh, this lady is my mom. Uh, her name's Eileen. And uh, back in 2012, uh, when I was actually studying for my bachelor's degree, I was three hours away in Indiana when one night I get a phone call from uh, my dad. And uh, we go through the typical college pleasantry type phone call when uh, the words he hits me with at the end were ones I was not ready for. Um, he tells me, son, we have some bad news. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, okay, what animal died? What family member got in an accident, who's injured. I'm running through all these lists of things, uh, trying to think of what could be wrong. And he says, well, uh, your mom went in for a routine doctor visit and they found cancer. And at that point, my whole world just stopped, right? I was about three months out from graduating with my bachelor's in athletic training when that news was given to me. And so I'm sitting there thinking to myself, like, are you kidding me? My, my mom can't have cancer. This can't be true. Um, and so I asked my dad, dad, what's our next steps? What's going to happen here? And he says, well, they want to bring her back in for some further testing because they don't know exactly what kind of cancer it is and how widespread it has gone. And so I said, okay, dad, can I be home for the testing? And he tells me, no, he says, you have to stay at school and you have to finish. And to put this story in a little bit more perspective, I'm the youngest of three boys, right? So when it comes to my mom, I'm very attached to her and I am very protective of her. And so to be told that I wasn't allowed to be there as this process starts was like ripping the heart out of my chest as I'm trying to fathom this whole thing going on. And uh, she goes in and she has the testing done and the doctors determined it was uterine cancer. Uh, and they had also determined that, that, that it hadn't spread beyond her uterus, which was good news, but there was still the question of, well, what's gonna happen next, right? What are we gonna experience during this journey? And uh, my dad tells me that the doctor's plan of attack is to do surgery. Um, they wanted to do a total hysterectomy on my mom. And at the time she was in her mid fifties. And so I'm sitting there and I'm like, okay, we're going to do surgery, try to get all of the cancer. And I'm racking my brain for ways to give my family hope about, you know, this whole process. And I'm coming up short on every single one. And so I asked my dad, when's the surgery? And he says, he gives me the date, which I don't remember now the exact time and day of that. But I said, okay, dad, let me come home for this one. I can miss one day of school to be home for the surgery. And he says, no, um, you have to stay, you have to finish because now you're even closer to graduating. And so mom goes in for surgery and I get a call from the recovery room this time. And I'm asking my dad, you know, how are things going? How's mom? He says, she's a little groggy. She's coming out from the anesthesia. And I said, well, what are the results of the surgery? And he says, well, the doctors say it went well. Uh, there weren't any complications. However, the doctors only think they got all the cancer. And I'm sitting there and I'm happy 
and my mom's doing well, but only one word there really jumped out at me from his whole, that whole sentence. And it was that word think, right? I'm sitting there pondering this in my head as to, you just cut open my mom, you removed her entire uterus, and you're not even 100% sure that you got all of the cancer out in this one try. And I'm thinking to myself, you've got to be more certain than that when you're dealing with stuff like this, because otherwise there's still no hope for the family or that family member who's going through cancer. And shortly after that is when I graduated and I moved home. And for those of you who have either uh, gone through this process or you've had a family member go through this process, you all know that there's those post-cancer screenings that last you know, anywhere from six months to a year, depending on what's going on. And every time my mom went in, I'm sure a lot of you maybe have experienced this too. It's like standing over a pit on a glass window and you're just waiting for that bad news that makes it break. And you're told that you only have X amount of months left to either spend with that person or, you know, be alive. And so she's going through that process and each time the answer was there's no sign of it yet and so it's like a little crack each time is being added to that glass well during that process i actually run into this guy at the gym one day who uh, unbeknownst to me would change the entire course of my family's life right uh, the man i ran into was the owner of the clinic that i work in dr brandon and he convinces me that I need to be a patient in his office. And so I do, and I turn around to my mom and I plead with her to take my advice on this one instant. And I said, you need to go to him and check him out. And she does. And she began to apply these five pillars to her life over that last remaining portion of those post-cancer screenings. And what happened was her body not only was able to fight off the cancer, but she became what we call in our office a cancer killer to where her body is just not suitable for the development of cancer anymore because what she's doing is making it inhospitable for it. She's not giving cancer the fuel it would need to thrive within her body. And so as you can see in this picture, we get to the end of that process and now my mom gets to be grandma to, oh, the count has gone up now, it's two, four, seven, eight, uh, soon to be nine grandchildren. Um, and these two are my two oldest natural grandchildren, uh, or niece and nephew. Um, and so I don't think her diagnosis would have been possible had she not applied these five pillars to her life to take back her health uh, during that time, right? And so as I'm going through this, I just want to want you guys to think about how this can apply to your own situation, right? And so the five pillars of health are going from what I believe to be the most important on is core chiropractic, uh, maximizing your nutrition. So making sure you're fueling your body with what it needs, having the right mindset to conquer and, you know, be a cancer killer, oxygen and exercise, because the body is designed to move. It's not designed to be sedentary, especially when going through something like dealing with cancer. And then minimizing toxins because a lot of the traditional cancer treatments are very toxic. And so you have to make sure your body is processing those toxins and eliminating them on a consistent basis to optimize your health. All right. And the one I'm obviously going to start off with is that core chiropractic because the one system in your entire body that controls every single function of every single cell, tissue, organ, and gland is your nervous system, right? You can have the best doctors and the best treatment and the best nutrition and the best mindset and be in the best shape of your life, but if you're not taking care of the one system that makes sure all of those other systems function properly, then honestly, you're not functioning at 100%, right? And as I put here on the page, there are spinal misalignments or what we call in our office subluxations that put damaging pressure on someone's nervous system, right? 
it's a it's a time and it's a thing that is caused by those three T's right there, your thoughts, your traumas, and your toxins. You know, we don't often think that the thoughts that we have can actually create a spinal misalignment. Uh, we, we often don't think that our thoughts can also affect our overall health. Well, there was a, a researcher, her name is Dr. Caroline Leaf, and she's big into neuroscience. And she actually studied this quite in depth. And what she found is that Honestly, about it's like 90 to 95% of any and all diseases that we face in our current culture are because of our thoughts, right? They're not necessarily lifestyle related. Our thoughts determine what our body produces. Uh, traumas, these can be things like your job, just if you're sitting all day or if you're bent over working in a factory all day, or it can be something more major like a sports injury or a car accident, right? And then toxins, like I hit on earlier, these are uh, the types of foods that we're eating. These are the products we're putting on our body. These are just the things we're exposed to out in, uh, out in nature, uh, just with everything being put into the air. And so we have to begin to address these three root causes of spinal misalignments to better the healing and function of our body because proper spinal alignment equals proper or better healing and function. Right. And a prime example of what happens when our spine is out of that proper alignment is this man right here, right? Um, show of hands for those who have video on, uh, how many of know of this guy right here, right? Uh, Christopher Reeves was arguably the epitome of what health was when he was playing Superman. And we all know he went for that horse ride, fell off and broke his neck and um, he uh, broke the atlas, the top bone of his neck, and pushed it just a couple centimeters back into his spinal cord. And that's when he ended up in that bottom right picture, right? Uh, he ended up a quadriplegic. I mean, you can see there in the picture, he has a trach tube in to help him breathe. Well, what he also had by the end of his life were iron lungs to help him continue to breathe. He had a pacemaker put in to keep his heart going. And then he had a colostomy bag that a PT or his wife had to massage his stomach to get him to digest his food and then eliminate it, right? All because he lost that proper alignment. And what researchers found with this man is that because he lost that, he actually aged 30 years in his last six years of life. All because his brain and his body could no longer communicate with each other, right? And so. Some of you are probably thinking, well, you keep mentioning proper spinal alignment. Well, what is proper spinal alignment? Well, proper alignment of spine is where you have, and I don't have a picture of this, three 45 degree curves when you're looking at the spine from the side, right? They should look like nice little bananas. From the front, your spine should be completely straight. If we lose these curves, which most of us do through time, it impacts your spinal cord. It impacts your brain's ability to communicate with your body. And so we have to make sure that we take care of that system, right? Two is nutrition. So, whoa, whoa, whoa. Who's jumping around on my screen here? Um, whoever that is, please quit clicking through the slides. We'll get there eventually. Um, with nutrition, what has been found through research is that cancer thrives in an acidic environment, which is usually created by eating too much sugar. Now, this could be processed sugars. This could be, uh, you know, things such as breads and pastas. But what they have found is that when they take cancer cells and they drop them into this type of environment where they feed them sugar, those cancer cells proliferate. They actually become harder to kill because that is what they thrive on. I mean, that's what a PET scan is, is it is radioactive sugar that they're injecting into the body to find out where the cancer is. And that's because the cancer cells take up that sugar and it lights them up, right? And so you have to make sure you're eating the right kinds of foods to put you into more of a basic internal environment so that those cells cannot thrive. Uh, you know, two common sayings we always have here in our office are, you are what you eat eats. So what I'm saying by this is this comes down to the meats that you're eating if you're not a vegetarian. Uh, you wanna make sure you're getting the highest quality meats you possibly can. So 
that would be a grass-fed, grass-finished piece of beef, right? And that's how cows are designed to live. Uh, free-range chicken, free-range chicken eggs, wild-caught fish, not farm-raised fish, right? Those are going to be more higher uh, nutrient density, which means then your body can use it better. Because if you're always putting junk in, you're always going to get junk out, right? And so your body's going to adapt to that, but it's also going to uh, function in a way in which you're feeding it. So the higher quality of the food is, the higher your body functions. The lower the quality of the food is, the lower your body's going to function because it doesn't know how to break down some of those foods. So you want to make sure you're really dialed in with your nutrition. Uh, mindset, as I said a little bit earlier, um, you are what you think you are, right? So if you're constantly thinking like, I'm always going to be sick or I'll never, you know, in this case, I'm never going to be free of cancer or uh, things of that nature, your body will respond and your body is going to build those cells and it's going to feed into that. So what you have to do is you have to begin to reframe your thinking. You have to really begin to believe that you can fight off cancer, that the cancer is never going to come back and that um, you're at your healthiest and happiest you can possibly be, right? Uh, a couple of little quick stats here is 75% of all illnesses and diseases are due to stress. Uh, that was produced in the Journal of American Medical Association, right? So one of the top journals here in the US. So we have to find ways to reduce our stress level to allow our body to function better. 80% uh, of all cancers are due to lifestyle, not genetics. I know that's a common a line that they use when you get your cancer diagnosis. Oh, this is genetic because you have a family history of X said cancer. Fact of the matter is, is you have more control over it than you think you do, right? Uh, by incorporating these five pillars, you actually get to have the chance to decide which genes turn on and which genes turn off, right? So if you're doing your very best to make sure your nutrition's dialed in, to make sure you have the right mindset, uh, to make sure that you're exercising enough and to make sure that you're minimizing your toxins and then you're taking care of your nervous system, your body will actually turn off the genes that produce sickness and turn on the ones that actually produce health. So this is why I call this the five pillars of health because they all play into making sure those genes that feed into sickness are turned off, not turned on. Um, oxygen and exercise. Like I said, the body is meant to move. We are not meant to be sedentary beings, right? So this doesn't have to be going out and as a, some people would say killing yourself with exercise and not being able to breathe afterwards. This can be as simple as going for an hour long walk or a, a bike ride daily, right? Because what oxygen does is, is when you're exercising, it gets pumped into your body and that oxygen actually fights off a lot of sicknesses and disease because they don't thrive in a high oxygen environment. That's why in some cancer treatments, they put you into a hyperbaric oxygen chamber because that cancer or that sickness can't thrive in a highly oxygenated environment. So they're trying to flood your cells with that oxygen to kill it. And that's exactly what exercise does. And it really doesn't even cost you a thing to do. You just need your own body and a place to move. Um, not only that, but exercise is gonna improve the microbiome of your gut, which is where a lot of your immune system comes from. Right? It actually changes around some of those gut bacteria that are good for you and improves them so that your body can better fight off whatever you're dealing with. Right? It also improves your lean muscle mass. I mean, let's be real. Everybody wants to look good when it's beach season. Am I wrong? Uh, everybody wants to be the one that people look at on the beach. Um, it helps with your overall body image because as you develop more lean muscle, your body starts to look better. So then you gain more confidence in yourself. And as I said there uh, earlier, it drives oxygen throughout your body and it helps to improve your overall immune system function. So this one, especially if you haven't really been incorporating this, is something that you want to look at really adding into your lifestyle to really start to give yourself an edge. 
And the last thing I have is the, the minimizing your toxin, your toxic load. So, uh, you know, some common signs of toxicity are brain fog, right? I mean, how many of us here, by a show of hands, throughout the day, sometimes feel like our brain is a little bit foggy and we're not thinking as clearly as we should. I'll be honest, I am. I have it every now and then, right? Uh, having abnormally low energy levels. Uh, unusual body odor, believe it or not. A lot of the body odor we have is because we are highly, our bodies are highly toxic and we need to get that stuff out of there. Uh, physical aches and pains. When you're toxic, it feeds into inflammation and inflammation feeds into sickness as well as skin issues. So this is like psoriasis, this is eczema, this is acne. Things of that nature are all signs of having a toxic body, right? So why do we wanna minimize them? Well, we wanna improve our cellular function because the more energy your body has to commit to detoxifying, the less it has to put towards making sure your food is digested properly, making sure you have enough energy in the your energy levels are stable to make sure that your brain is, your thinking's clear, right? The more energy it wastes on that, the less it has for the other more vital functions. It also repairs damaged DNA because the longer you're toxic, the more it actually damages your DNA. So by getting those toxins out, your DNA can repair itself and function the way that it's designed to. Um, it also helps decrease bodily stress levels because we don't often realize it, but when we're highly toxic, our stress levels go up in response because our body is trying to deal with all of that, right? And the list goes on and on and on, which is why I say, especially with someone who has someone going through cancer or they're going through that process themselves, find someone who can walk you through a detoxifying process. Walk, find someone who can help you figure out what you need to do to make sure your body's eliminating a lot of that toxic side effect to free up more of that life-giving energy so your body can fight off the cancer more rather than respond when it when things you know start to go differently. Um, and so these are the what I like I said, the things I call the five pillars of health, because when put together, you have a an unbeatable offense for maximizing your health and unleashing the truest version of yourself. And so um, there are ways, like I said, to implement these things into your life. There are ways to make sure that you can take small steps to maximizing your health. But as I said at the very beginning, you can minimize your toxins, you can have the best nutrition, you can have the best mindset, you can be exercising daily. Uh, and all those are great. But if you don't have the cornerstone of the chiropractic piece as well, and then you're missing one major chunk because you're not freeing up the function of the body to do what it is designed to do, right? And so um, if you're out, if you're always looking for more information, we have multiple ways that you're able to get in touch with us or just hear more about this. Uh, our clinic owner has two radio shows, three radio shows that go on on the weekends, right? Each week he's talking about a new topic and just really helping people understand more about what health is. So those are a great way to get more information. Uh, you can always find us on Facebook at Revive Cairo Life. We're always updating our information there, posting new videos and just trying to reach as many people as we can. Or lastly, you can just give us a call. We'd always love to help anyone that we can. So, um, I mean, that, that's the basic of what I got. Does anyone have any questions? You are uh, welcome to unmute um, to ask Dr. List any questions or put it in the chat. Um, and I'd be happy to uh, read that uh, question or comment for him. I have a, a question about exercise. Yes, ma'am. Um, you kind of always hear that um, 
even just eat like 10, 15 minutes a day if, if is passable, if you can't do anything else. I don't know. I was just kind of curious what you thought about that. If you can't, if you can't do your 20 minutes plus, like if, if you can just take a few minutes. Yeah. So we always tell all of our patients in the office that if time is an issue and you only have about that 10 to 15 minutes in the morning and you're able to, make it an exercise program that's gonna make you sweat, right? Um, because sweating is one way that your body also detoxifies itself. And so you wanna make sure that it's getting the heart rate up uh, and that uh, you're starting to sweat because otherwise um, in that short of time frame, just going for like a 15 minute walk is good, but I would much rather have someone maximize that time and make sure that they're really getting in as much as they can in that time to really begin to boost their health. Um, I mean, most of my exercise in the morning is 10 to 12 minutes, if I'm being honest. And I'm really pushing it there to make sure I get a good workout every morning. Okay. So, yeah. Um, Teresa, is chiropractic covered by Medicare and insurance? That is a great question. Uh, most insurance companies honestly only want to pay for about 12 visits of chiropractic care, right? And so if there's more uh, things going on than just a simple issue that can be resolved in 12 visits, they're not going to pay for it. Um, but that doesn't mean someone like our office can't teach you how to use that insurance to get them to help pay for more. We do it all the time. Uh, but the only way to know and that instance is for someone to go visit a chiropractor and see what it's gonna take and then what will be covered and then walk through that process with someone. I got a quick question for you. How do you counteract the effects of the uh, ADT treatment, the hormone treatments? I mean, because what you list there are mostly all the side effects from that treatment. You mean, you got the fatigue, you've got the, you know, you got all basically everything. It's just a, a terrible, terrible side effects from that treatment. And you don't really feel like exercising or doing anything. Yeah. So that's an instance where exercise would come maybe a little bit later, um, but that's where I would, like I said, I'd find someone who can walk you through uh, some detoxification processes, things that will aid your body in flushing out some of those more harmful things so that you can get more of that energy back, right? Um, uh, I know, I don't know how many of you on here have heard of this, but there's an institute called the Gerson Institute where their specialty is actually cancer treatment and they do it all naturally. Um, and in studies that they did with people that came to see them, what they found were they could help people fight off cancer, but they would die shortly after. And they found that it's because their body was so heavily toxic. So they instituted protocols to help their body detoxify. And they found that people were actually not only beating the cancer, but they were living longer because they were flushing that stuff out that isn't really needed and allowing the body to function better. So uh, in that case, that'd be something where, uh, and I know I'm not allowed to uh, try to convince any of you to come see me personally or my office, but um, uh, we do have a program in our office where we walk through stuff like that with people uh, to help them get on the other side of that. I mean, we've had not only my mom who's done it, we've had another lady who, uh, has fought and survived cancer and she's still with us today and still a patient with us. And so um, there are ways to counteract that. You just need someone who can walk you through that process. And another option, I would think that um, for looking at a detox program like that would be working with your already established medical team um, and getting feedback from them of what they would recommend on, on how to do that. And if you have a, 
I mean, if you find someone who's good, they're always willing to collaborate with other professionals to figure out how they can best serve you, not just be the one who's like having to be all end all because oftentimes in that second scenario, things don't always go as well as planned because they're not taking into account other people's point of views or expertise to help that person truly succeed. So um, yeah, I'd make sure that they're willing to collaborate. So do we have any other questions for Dr. List about the five pillars of health um, or anything else he spoke about today? Well, if we don't have any other questions, we do appreciate Dr. Liss for uh, spending his time with us. We will be sending out, we, I will be sending out a uh, survey monkey. So please look for um, that survey monkey link um, that'll come from um, dhoneyford at cancersupportohio.org uh, because Dr. List has donated his time um, to do our Lunch and Learn program and educate us but we still have uh, grants that help cover the cost for this program and your feedback is really necessary for our funders. So please take a second to answer 10 short questions. Um, that survey will be closed on Friday at five and then I'll have a volunteer um, hopefully uh, be able to uh, tally that and then I will send the results on to Dr. List as well. Um, Dr. List, we do have a question, um, a request from Rose, if you could put your phone number up. Well, again, Dr. List, thank you so very much uh, for donating your time and thanks everybody for joining us today. As I mentioned, this session is being recorded so you'll be able to find that on uh, Cancer Support Communities website or Cancer Support Community Central Ohio's website.